Hi, well there's a while since I've made a video but this is a quick little video about how to blend coloured pencil crayons. I've got a little selection here. They come in all sorts of colours anyway so you don't always need to blend them. Um, and, you know, The bigger the pack, the bigger the selection of colours. But I just want to talk about how they can be all be different. I've got several different makes here made by different companies. Um, pencil, coloured pencil crayons are made by mixing a pigment, a coloured powder, in with a hard wax. And depending on how hard the wax is and how strong the colour is, depends on how strong they colour. So this orange one here is actually a very strong colour. And this red one here, I think the wax is a bit harder and the colours, it comes out quite pink. It doesn't come out a really dark red. So it's always worth doing a few little tests to see what colours you've got before you start. It's quite normal in a sketchbook down the side or down in the corner or on the next page to see a little row of colour tests like that. First I'm going to do a little bit of a recap on your colour mixing knowledge. We've done lots before with paint but not with crayons um, and I want to show you today that you can mix colours with crayons. Um, your primary colours in the middle, these colours can't be mixed, is blue, yellow and red. You have to buy those or get those as they start. They're your primary colours. Then here I've added in your secondary colours. When I mix blue and yellow together, I get green. When I mix yellow and red together, I get orange. And when I mix red and blue, I get purple. On here they've written violet, just a posh name for purple. And if I wanted to blend them even further, so between green and yellow, is a colour called green yellow and if I lightly colour a bit of green and lightly colour a bit of yellow you can see I end up with a colour somewhere in between green yellow okay so that's our colour theory mixing we're going to do well, what we're going to start off with is how do you even colour with crayons properly we hold them like we hold a pencil Quite often when I'm colouring, I don't hold them very upright and stab them or push them hard. We're looking for that gentle swaying movement like this. Can you see there? I'm not even touching the paper doing that. And we're trying to fill areas very gently. I'm not going to press down really hard straight away. I'm just going to build up layers of colour. So there's a very light green layer now gone in in the middle of that shape. I'm curving the strokes around the edge where the line's curved and where I go over again in a slightly different direction I get a slightly stronger colour and then when I go over again you can change direction you don't have to you'll learn to build up different textures that way as well can you see now I've managed to get a whole load of values just like you would with your pencils your graded pencils but this time I've got different levels of green by getting stronger and stronger. So pencil quite on the side, gently, back and forth quickly. I'm not pressing hard, I'm just letting that colour gently rub off onto the paper. And you can get a really nice soft tone like that. Okay. Um, so let's think how I could blend colours. Let's go back to... Um, Say if I was colouring, or let's stick with the greens, I've got a leaf here to have a go at. I might pick several colours that on my colour wheel would all be on one side. So can you see I've gone for yellow, yellow goes through to green, then it gets darker green and finally it would get more blue. Yellow would be my light highlight colour, blue would be my shadow colour and green is the colour of the leaf. Okay, leave that one up there. You've got colour wheels in your classroom now. There will be more at some point. So say on this leaf I wanted to get lots of different tones of colour. I want to think first about my highlight colour. Where is it going to be lightest? If you look here at my hand, it's dark at the edges and lighter here where this light's coming down and hitting it there. So I'm going to do the same with my leaf. I'm going to put some light colour gentle strokes following the shape of what I think the leaf is okay build up some yellow tone in the middle and then I'm going to fade in a bit of green now leaves often have lines in them so I might try and build those up as I color trying to add texture and shape 
I'm blending some green into the edge of my yellow crayon there. How's that looking? I'm going to get my darker green. I think well, the edges were very dark. So start from my edges and work back. I might need to put some of that lighter green across it because it's quite a big colour jump. These are different kinds of crayons. Didn't do what I advised you to do, did I? Which was to test them first. You can sort of reach a limit where they, you obviously won't be able to colour with a crayon. A lighter crayon won't change, get rid of the dark green, but it will maybe just add to the colour and make it a bit richer. So I'm not going to put yellow over dark green and turn it into yellow, but it will become a more yellowy green. Okay. And you can keep just working away and adding layers of colour, slowly building it up. If you want a very pale colour, that's fine, but you can slowly build up crayons that are in a similar place on the colour wheel, they will start mixing together. I think when we first start using crayons we think the whole area has to be green and we scribble and we scribble and we scribble and we press down as hard as we can. There we go. Another nice thing to do, um, <laughs> this is an interesting one, opposite green on my colour wheel is red or orange. Maybe the red or orange would really make the green stand out. So in the shadow area under there, I'm going to outline the underline with a red and the other side with an orange, adding some outlines, even if it's in the same color. So I can go in with my dark green and add the line down the middle and add the veins in the leaf. You can do lots of work just with your pencil crayons. I just started, I've probably started with quite a dark drawing here, but you know, you can do yours very light, you know you can do that. The blue would be the shadow colour and I only want a very tiny bit of that at the very edge to give it a really dark colour. Okay, so that's some example of you using green and yellow to run red because they all came from this side of our colour wheel. Maybe I want to do um, a red triangle. I'm going to look on my colour wheel again. On this side is red, on the other side of it is orange. I may even have some yellow again going that way. Or I might have some purple here. Crayon we often have with red as well as pink. Um, it's not on our colour wheel because it's when we add white to red that makes it go a bit paler. Okay, so I'm going to think of this triangle and try and make it a bit more 3D, a bit more interesting. I'm not just going to spend 20 minutes colouring it in with a red crayon. I'm going to speed this one up. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but again, you can see how the, where the colours blend into each other. You can create all sorts of effects by mixing your crayons over each other. And you can start thinking um, about adding textures and patterns using your crayons as well. So there's a technique called cross-hatching that I know you've learned with your pencils. Go one way, then another, then if you want to go a third or even a fourth, that's when you could start adding in other colours. Um, you can use lines and shapes in different colours that start mixing them together to make a new effect. So we're looking in your piece this time to try and use crayons not to just fill in one whole area. Um, I'm thinking you guys will be doing um, quite large areas if you're doing scenery or things like that. So I was very much thinking about using how you could use your pencil to very lightly break them up. Say we've got a large room and oh the wall's all blue. Well make sure you put a window in the wall. Make sure you put a pattern on it. We don't really want just giant areas of colour. And when it's blue, make sure you've got some dark blue 
make sure where it's near the window you've got some sunlight from the yellow makes the blue go a bit green you've got some purple near the curtains try and use your colors a little bit more interestingly and remember you can just start super pale super light but if you can break those large areas up into smaller ones even if you think oh, it's light on this side and then it gets really dark over here that will add a bit more interest to your final pictures okay i'm gonna have a little color and i'll speed it up good luck playing with your crayons <laughs>